not every World of Tanks session is going to go according to your plan, so sometimes all you have to do is take out a tank you can trust to blow off some steam and maybe you will accidentally break your own damage record in this tank just like I did in the tortoise. Now, let me show you what just happened. Hey, it's me from the future. We have managed to remark the tortoise uh, just the next day and we have live streamed the event. I'm going to put it in the comment uh, below and in the description so you can go and check it out if you want to. Now, back to the game. For those who don't know me, this is who I am and enjoy the gameplay I just had in the tortoise, honestly. Uh, this is an unexpected video to me because I have just been finishing off my session, which did not go according to plan because I was playing underpowered tanks. I was trying to have fun in my uh, links, but it was just not going to happen. So I took a tank I can trust to just to blow off some steam and this entire game is going to be an example of how to stay calm regardless of the pressure that's being put on you. So what I go, what I, what I do here is I position myself uh, enough um, to have a vision on the tank's crossing. So I build up information about what's going to happen in front of me. I have a powerful high explosive shell with I believe 120 millimeters of penetration uh, loaded for some juicy side shots. Unfortunately, unfortunately, that does not happen. So I go back to AP and I put a shot in the Hori 1. We are going to see uh, a little bit more of this guy later on, but then we see a Carnarvon. So I fully aim and I penetrate his upper plate because it's an easy shot for my tank. Tortoise has three uh, ammunition choices and honestly AP is good, uh, but when you play on top level consider using uh, APCR and uh, those are beautiful, I believe those are Hesh shells. Uh, to maximize your damage output because this is all about maximizing your performance. You're going to see a lot of tracking shots uh, in here because this is what I tend to do in my tortoise. My DPM and the reload are insane statistics above me and this allows me uh, to do exactly this. As you can see, my aim circle blooms quite a lot. It's, this is because I am not using any gun improvements. So I use a turbocharger because this vehicle needs mobility. I use a uh, rammer, rammy directive and uh, something fancy to boost my uh, hit points of my tracks. I don't even honestly remember what this is, but this is beside the point. It basically doesn't matter because Tortoise is all about the DPM. There are many ways you can uh, make a build for a Tortoise. Uh, don't let anyone tell you how to play your Tortoise. You play it the way it works for you. Now, prioritize your target. So I kill the links, that's to eliminate the gun out of the game. Then I put a shot in the Tortoise because it was an easy shot and it was a guaranteed penetration. Then I shoot the Tortoise Cupola. And now that I have a more important target, which is E75, that is angling at 45 degrees, I track him once. And then when he makes the angle worse, I track him twice, he is now permanently tracked. I wiggle drive up and down the entire time. I stop moving just enough to get myself a full aim on him. As you can see, I stop just before I fire, fully aim and then re-track him on and on and on. This is the reason why Tortoise is such a beast. Now, I know that the Tortoise is in trouble. By the way, have you been watching the minimap? It's kind of crazy. There's a Concept 1B behind me. I know that. So I put one more shot into the Tortoise and I turn my attention to the 777 who has wasted a little bit too much time. I make sure I aim my shot as good as I can and I change my target to Concept 1B who needs now my attention. Tension. I'm going to go through his cupola because Concept 1B is powerful and armored only when fully hulled down and using his gun depression, which this guy was not. Now, this is a funny situation we have right now because there's a Fosh. I wait for him to turn, I track him, I go forward to make sure that I can retrack him. That's the whole point. I shot him again and then what you see me do here, I ignore the STRV in front of me and I shoot the Fosh behind him because I was trying to remove the extra gun. So I don't quite have an outline and I bounce the Fosh unfortunately and now Uda surprises me. I did not intend my the guy behind me to die and I switched to high explosive by the way, 448 and then I switch targets because I see the Fosh does not have an angle where I am here. 
I see the Burask. I ignore the Burask. He just shot me twice, so that means he is now on reload. I put two high explosive shells into the Udas, eliminating him from the game. I failed to penetrate the SRV, but now I make him a one shot for me, so that should all go nice, but that did not quite connect. Doesn't matter now. I'm going to take one more from the Burask, I believe, but. I don't have the gun, uh, the gu my gun level is at the same level of the XMV. This is karma from, uh, from coming at me uh, from the grave because I let the guy die. And now I am forced in a situation where I'm kind of pincered here, but I know that the Burask fired twice again, so I have time. I calm down, I look behind, I think of myself, okay, STRV is not pushing me, Fosh has escaped, and now it's just a matter of me versus the, uh, the Burask. Burask does not have an easy time uh, penetrating me. He needs to hit me uh, into my cupola, so I make sure that I aim as good as I can and I take him out of the game. This is the seventh kill of the game, and by the time uh, we finish this flank, my team has pushed on the other flank, I have 9,100 damage, and can I make another shot to get it, um, to get myself one more kill? You already know this because I saw, you saw the intro, but this is beside the point. Sometimes simple tanks, not too sophisticated tanks, are best steam blowers, honestly. When you're angry, when you when the session is not going well, you can pick a tank that has a very simple play style to make it a little bit easier on yourself. And I go eco mode and shot my last AP shell on the STRV just to bounce him, but I correct it with an APCR and that is it. Radley Walters, 9,200 damage and what a game that was. And now I think all I have to do is maybe three mark the tortoise. We'll see. <laughs> Let me show you the post game stats. And this is the post battle statistic with Steel Wall. Of course, we've bounced quite all the shots. High caliber, obviously, Top Gun and Radley Walters. 9,696 damage, nearly 2,000 base experience because every single shot we uh, took was from our own spotting. And because we have mixed and matched the ammunition types, uh, we have made quite a healthy uh, profit because we are still running boosters. As I said, uh, it's currently. 8.30 and this battle started half an hour ago so I as soon as it finished uh, I, I thought like I have to record this while it's hot because I'm so excited about it and this is it this is the tortoise and that module that I've uh, I said I don't remember even what it does this is it more hit points uh, more module durability more suspension dur durability so it makes your tracks harder to take off and it uh, gives you more hit points so it's a combination of uh, I, like, you could easily e use the improved hardening. Guys, don't let anyone tell you how to play your game, honestly. Min-maxing ain't a thing, really. You can have this exact same game by playing with a different setup. If it works for you, it works, right? Don't let anyone, any min-maxer tell you uh, what you're supposed to be doing. So yeah, this is me and the story of my, tor my tortoise. Uh, I had another 9k game in the tortoise which I wanted to highlight, but uh, this one is so much better than the other one uh, that I'm going to just scrap the other one and you will see this one instead. Well, tell me what you think uh, about this uh, kind of an excited gameplay uh, format in the comment section. I'll see you down there and take care. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did like this one, you'll probably like one of these two as well. And if you've already seen them all, well, stay tuned for the next one. In the meantime, I'll see you on the battlefield.